Hi, everybody. Welcome to NJACAC and StriveScan's Virtual College Education Week. You are here for a great treat. We've got representatives from four phenomenal institutions that will tell you all about them. Um, I want all the participants to know that you are muted and you are obviously not on camera like we are. If you want to ask questions, and certainly our reps here would love questions, you need to use the Q&A feature. Don't get worried if you feel like there's a lot of questions ahead of yours, everything will be answered. If it's not answered tonight, they will get back to you. This is one of 185, I believe, sessions. It is being recorded, so you will have the chance to go back and watch it or share it. If you know someone interested in one of the schools, you can certainly say, hey, I went to this really great thing. You also have the ability to go on, register for more sessions. We've got more this week and into next week. And you can see the recordings as well. So I'm going off screen and leaving you in the hands of some great college people. Bye. All right, thank you. Uh, hi, everyone. Good afternoon, nighttime, uh, somewhere in that range. My name is Jesse Schaffner. I'm an assistant director with Syracuse University. I'm joined by some fabulous colleagues from University of Louisville, University of Miami, and University of Pittsburgh. Um, we all are going to share a little bit about our institutions for about eight minutes or so. So it's going to be pretty brief. Um, if you want any more information about any of our institutions, I highly encourage you to ask questions in the Q&A. But to be honest with you, we're not going to have a ton of time to answer all of your questions. So all of our presentations will also have our email and our contact information. So please feel free to write those down. And if we don't get to your questions, please feel free to reach out to us. And all of us also have information sessions virtually done. So if you wanna learn more about our institutions, we also highly suggest you go to each of our websites and kind of register for those to get a little bit deeper into some of that information. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen here. Um, as I said, my name is Jessica Schaffner. I'm an assistant director with Syracuse University. Again, this is my contact information here, so you can definitely feel free to reach out to me with any questions that you do have. I do work with students out of New Jersey, um, so I am more than happy to help you along this college process as a whole. When I'm talking about Syracuse University, I always like to start about our location, our community overall. And so Syracuse University is located in Syracuse, New York, um, which depending where you're coming from in New Jersey tends to be about four to possibly five hours away um, if you're a little bit farther on kind of the coastline. But Syracuse, New York is considered a small size city of about 100,000 residents overall. So we are large enough to be able to have a lot of the city amenities students are looking for basic transportation needs, a lot of internship and shadowing opportunities, as well as just fun in the community. But we're also a small enough community that we're often placed in the top 25 college towns. Uh, and so you can see from here that Syracuse University really is that traditional residential campus. You can see from these pictures that you're not going to have major roadways going through campus. Everything's really in that one-stop shop for you. Um, I think it's also important to know that Syracuse does get all four seasons. I promise it does not only look like this picture on the right-hand side, although many people feel like it does. Um, but we do get all four seasons that our students are able to really enjoy and partake in. Now, when we're thinking of ourselves as an academic institution, Syracuse is considered mid-size. So we have about 15,000 undergraduate students overall. Those 15,000 undergraduate students are actually going to be comprised of 10 different schools and colleges, which are actually the 10 that are listed here. Please note that our two liberal arts schools, which are going to be the College of Arts and Sciences and Maxwell School, are placed together on the same kind of bullet point. So if you're saying, hey, there's only nine there, know that we actually treat those two liberal arts schools as different entities. The social sciences are actually taught out of Maxwell School, whereas our natural sciences, humanities, and general science curriculum is taught out of the College of Arts and Sciences. The other eight schools are what we like to call pre-professional. And so please know when you apply into the university, you all automatically need to kind of think of 
where do you want to start your path? So you do have to choose a school or college to start your path off in. But know that for almost all of our schools and colleges, you can actually apply undecided to, to really figure out which pathway looks best for you. Know that 40% of our students actually apply in undecided. So if you are a little undecided, that's okay. You're in good company. Our average student changes their major twice by the time that they graduate as well. We had a tour guide that graduated this past year and I promise I'm not exaggerating. He changed his major 22 times in the College of Arts and Sciences by the time that he graduated and he graduated on time. I still don't know how he did that, but it's a possibility. So know that we are very flexible while you'll Kind of have a class schedule and most of your classes in your major within a school or college you're really not siloed within that one area so no you do have access to classes across all of the 10 schools and colleges we really encourage our students to explore the liberal arts explore minors in different areas and even possibly have what we call a dual enrollment major which is majors across schools and colleges so again we really want to give that exploratory option to our students as much as possible now outside of just the classroom experience where our students are oftentimes in much smaller classes than they would assume our average class size sits at 26 students but 60 percent of our classes are taught at under 20 students so really high school size and smaller so while you are going to have that personalized setting know that we also want to give you a lot of those I would say additional personalized pieces that can come from a lot of times at a smaller institution. And so know that all of our students actually get three advisors when they come into the university. You'll have your academic advisor, your peer advisor, and your career advisor from day one. Syracuse actually has 10 career centers, one in each of the individual schools and colleges, um, because we wanna specialize really those connections and that process as much as we can for students. And so know from day one, you not only have people who are really mentoring you through your academic pathway, but also that career pathway and really finding out what you're passionate about overall. We not only want our students to really have their academic experience in the classroom, but we also want them to be academically curious outside of the classroom. And so many of our students are taking that curiosity and applying it into research opportunities. Syracuse is an R1 research institution, so at the top tier of all research institutions in the country. We also have many different maker spaces, innovation centers, where many of our students are actually beginning their own businesses on campus. We have over 20 different business competitions yearly for students to really start those organizations and kind of get the ball rolling on an idea that they have um, but we also it really uh, talk to students about exploring their opportunity academically off of our campus so know that study abroad is a big piece of Syracuse University just under 50% of our students will study abroad by the time they graduate. Syracuse is actually ranked as the number 11 college in the country to study abroad with. We have eight centers worldwide that we own and operate, as well as partnering with 50 other colleges in 60 other countries. So there's tons and tons of spaces that you can go to. Um, the big promise Syracuse University makes is that 100% of our students have access to study abroad. There's not one major that you won't graduate on time if you go study abroad. So really big promise that we do make. On the flip side, right, talked a lot about academics. I definitely want to talk a little bit about our community. I mentioned earlier that we're a residential campus. To quantify that for you, about 70% of our student body does live on campus at any given time. We really aren't a commuter population though, so know that that 30% of students are generally going to be juniors and seniors who decide to live off campus with friends and apartment complexes, rental properties, or Greek housing. Um, overall, our community really stays on campus at any given time. We have students from all 50 states and over 160 countries. So there's a lot of ways to engage with students at a consistent basis. We have over 300 organizations. We are division one in the ACC conference, probably something you would have thought of based off of the name of this panel overall. Um, but we also have many lecture series to music fest festivals yearly. So tons of ways to really engage in that community. Last but not least, um, I do want to kind of wrap up here with a little bit of I guess more of the nitty gritty of the application process here for Syracuse University. Please know that Syracuse is common app exclusive. It'll be the only place you apply to for us. 
Big thing to know, as I mentioned earlier, is when you apply into the university, you apply into a specific school or college. And so that's gonna be the biggest difference on our Common App, is you're gonna select a school and college to apply into. From there, you can either apply undecided or to a specific major in that school or college. We also do have a uh, kind of one short answer question where we're asking you, why are you applying to Syracuse? And really, how do you believe you can add to our diverse and inclusive institution? Outside of that, uh, we're gonna require three recommendations as well as your transcript. We did become test optional for this year. So if you have questions, feel free to ask about that. Um, and then outside of that, we have two deadlines, either early decision or regular decision. You can see from the screen that early decision is a November 15th deadline regular decision is a January 1st deadline. Whew, lots of info in a very short amount of time. Um, so I hope some of that was a little helpful for you. Uh, but at this stage, I want to uh, give it over to my colleague Richard to talk a little bit more about the University of Louisville. But thank you all. Thank you, Jess. I appreciate uh, your great lead off there. And uh, let me start my video here. There we go. Hi, I'm Richard Mullen, and I am the Eastern States Regional Admission Person for the University of Louisville. I live and work right here in New Jersey. I work from my home in Little Falls, which is a small town right next to Montclair. I think some of you may know where that is. Um, uh, we are the University of Louisville. I'm going to share my screen with you right now. Um, there we go. The University of Louisville, of course, is in Louisville, Kentucky. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about the city of Louisville later. What some of you may not know is that we are a medium-sized institution. We've been around since 1798. From 1798 until 1970, we we're actually a private university. So we've only been a public university for the Commonwealth of Kentucky for just about 50 years. I'm gonna start off with a, um, a video. I'm gonna put myself in slideshow mode here. And we're gonna start with a video tonight. You walk in here and you don't know where you fit. But there are people from everywhere, and everyone's looking. For friends, for fun, for their future. Jock, geek, troublemaker, nerd, blah, blah, blah. Forget your high school labels. Here, you'll live in a diverse world of individuals. The University of Louisville's student body is representative of the state, the country, the entire giant planet. Starting now, you get to define you. No, 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 you've got the R all wrong. With more than 200 majors available, we definitely have your major. Before you graduate, you'll go to more than 1,200 classes. And you'll traverse a park-like campus cultivated with more than 220 years of history. There's also lots of opportunities for internships, co-ops, international study abroad, and research programs to layer your education. UofL is about much more than academics. Explore the things you love. Join a club, volunteer in the community, get active in student government, start a study group for one of your classes. The residence halls are a great place to bond with new friends. Almost everyone loves their first roommate. Almost. But don't roost in your room too long. We've got state-of-the-art workout facilities, a variety of intramural sports, and other fitness clubs that make it easy to stay active. Stop, that R is still not quite right. Back up. Rubbing the toe of the thinker during finals week will bring you good luck on your exams. On the other hand, don't step on the cardinal bird. It's bad luck, very bad luck. You're leaving the nest to explore new boundaries, but don't be confined by the boundaries of campus. Louisville is a vibrant city full of culture, music, parks, sports, and great food. So get ready to settle in and learn how to throw what you know, because by the time that you leave the University of Louisville, you'll be ready to. When you become an insider here, you're ready to make an impact out there. All right.
Well, let me see. Okay, now. Well. Okay, let's get back to it. This is gonna be the most important slide I show you all night. The University of Louisville, even though we are around since 1798, is only in its second year recruiting in the Northeast and in New Jersey, and in New Jersey only, we offer this special regional award. If you are in New York or most of Pennsylvania, except for Philadelphia, you do not receive this award. The entry level award for regional scholars is $10,000. You'll note there is no GPA or SAT. Everyone who is admitted receives the $10,000 award. So if you are our best student, you are, and this is automatic, there is no other qualification. What it has the net effect of doing, um, I'm gonna move my slide there, is making our overall price 28072. 28072 all in for the year. And you see some, I put some right from their websites. I'm not trying to call anybody out there, but these are um, as well, well, I was gonna say some in-state options. At 28072, the University of Louisville becomes lower in price than Rutgers for an in-state New Jersey student. Again, we are a medium-sized R1 research institution. We've got well over 200 majors, 12 schools and colleges, including medicine and dental, and a BSMD program and a unique BSDDS program if you're interested in dentistry that will save you a year. We are also Carnegie highest level for community engagement. There are only about 60 schools in the country that hold both of those awards. We're a leading producer of Fulbright scholars among medium-sized schools with 130 and 15 years. Got brand new residence halls under construction, one which will open next summer for freshmen only, one the following summer, each of those about 500 beds just for freshmen. About 25% less year, 27% of our students from outside of Kentucky, 34 young people from New Jersey joined us last year as new Cardinals, really excited about that. About 27% of our students are people of color. We have a 350 acre main campus and about 20% of our students participate in Greek life. Just a beautiful campus. We talked a little bit about that. Um, you do know we're in the ACC, of course, 23 different sports teams. Um, among the 200 majors, I did not mention, we are the number two rated program in the nation for sports administration. Um, we have a big business school, a big engineering program, and a big nursing program. The engineering program is a co-op program, uh, which is unique. Um, the city of Louisville is a large city. Uh, we heard that Syracuse was about 100,000. Louisville is just under 1 million people, and the Louisville metro area is 1.6 million people. So it is not a small town in any way, shape, or form. Uh, we're located about two miles from the Muhammad Ali International Airport. There are six nonstop flights a day from Newark, and there are five nonstop flights a day from Philadelphia. It's about an hour and 15 minutes in the air and under $200 uh, most of the year when you're buying a round trip ticket. Three Fortune 500 companies headquartered in Louisville, 17 others with a major influence or, or presence in the city. We do get all four seasons. We have 109 different languages spoken in Louisville. You all know about the Kentucky Derby, but you may not know we have the only underground zip lining in the United States in a salt cavern in Louisville. And we have the largest fireworks display in the nation every year, Thunder Over Louisville, which opens Derby Week. Um, our application process, we are also test optional this year for the first time ever. We are also Common App this year for the first time ever. We do still have our in-house app, but for most New Jersey students, Common App is the better way to apply. If you begin with us, you must choose whether you're sending test scores or not. You, it is test score optional at the student's discretion. I advise all students to begin their process test score optional. You may add test scores later in the process, but you may not go in reverse. Once you send your test scores, you may not change backwards to test score optional. Um, I'll be available in answering your questions in the Q&A. 
and my information will be available, well, let's see, right here on the next page, I believe. Thanks so much for joining us, and I'm going to um, turn it over to, well, let's see, to, um, uh, to Gertiana. Thank you so much, Richard. Hi, everyone. So my name is Gertie Anna Thelomar. I'm an assistant director in the Office of Admission at the U. I recruit in northern New Jersey, um, and I'm also a proud alumna. So I went there for undergrad, had an amazing experience. I bleed orange and green all the way. I'm really excited to be able to present to you all today a little bit about the institution. So to get started, I do want to share just some fast facts about the university and give you a brief overview of what we offer as far as academics and what our student life kind of looks like. So the University of Miami was founded in 1925, so we're a very young institution. There's this common misconception that we're like this huge state-sized school, um, but we're a mid-sized institution. Um, so we have about 10,000 undergrads. And I tell students all the time, you know, campus is big enough where you can meet new people every day, but also small enough where you can see the same people you know every day as well. So it's a nice balance for students interested in that kind of atmosphere. We're located in Coral Gables, Florida, so about 20, 25 minutes away from the main city of Miami, um, but definitely close enough to all the popular spots in the city. Um, and our students come from all over the world, 100 plus countries, 49 states, so really a diverse campus, and it's kind of a reflection of the city of Miami itself. And I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. We offer nine undergraduate schools and colleges with over 180 plus majors and programs to choose from. As it go, going back to our, our size, um, our class sizes are pretty small. So on average, you have about 16 to 26, 27 students in a typical classroom, which really allows for a personalized experience where faculty members know you by name, um, you get to make connections, you're not just lost in an auditorium, um, you really get to have that personalized feel in the classroom. We are direct admit, so that means if you indicate on the Common App what your intended major, what you want that to be, if you get admitted, you'd start off right in that school or college. We do have an undecided track in the School of Business, and we also have an exploratory arts major for our undecided students as well. We have a very flexible academic curriculum that really allows students to be the architect of their own education. Our version of general education allows for this flexibility where students can take classes in across all of our schools and colleges, really. So there's three areas of knowledge that you're required to take three classes under to fulfill your gen ed, but you get to decide how you want to fulfill it, um, these requirements. So you have STEM, arts and humanities, and people in society. It's so flexible that students end up picking up a second major or even picking up a minor along the way because of this academic flexibility. So you're not really confined to whatever school or college you start off in. You can definitely continue there or you can branch out and explore um, other areas that you are interested in. In addition to that, we also offer study abroad opportunities. We go all over the world. We also have eight U programs, which are specific to University of Miami, led by university um, faculty members where they have, and they take students to areas where they're doing projects and conducting research, and students get to tag along. You can go for the typical fall or spring semesters, or you can go for spring break, summer break, winter break, and regardless of your major, you can definitely find a program um, that you can study abroad in. We also offer research opportunities. So we are a private research institution, so lots of funding put into place to make sure students get a lot of hands-on experience, both inside and outside of the classroom, as early as your first year. You don't have to wait till junior or senior years to really figure out if this is what you wanna do, if this is the field you wanna go down. As soon as you walk on campus, you can get involved in these different um, opportunities to figure out what exactly you want to do and if this is the career for you. In addition to all of those academic opportunities, we also have a lot of things to do on campus. Campus is very active and lively for our students. Um, we have 300 plus student organizations to choose from. These range from social clubs, cultural, political, pre-professional, religious. We have Greek life. There's student um, community service organizations. So lots of ways to really get involved, um, to meet new people, expand your horizons, and learn soft skills that you probably wouldn't learn in the classroom, but that would definitely be um, helpful um, for when the time comes to find internships and jobs. In addition to all these student organizations planning a, a variety of events and programs on campus, um, we also have a lively um, student life because of our Division I teams. 
Um, so students get to go to all the games for free. Um, school spirit is very high. Like I said, as soon as you walk on campus, you feel like you're part of this U Miami family. Um, you literally feel like you bleed orange and green um, and you're part of this connected community. Um, we also have intramural sports as well for students. So lots of opportunities to get involved on campus. In addition to that, there's a lot of things to do off campus. We are located in Miami. Miami is a hub for everything you can think of. Arts, entertainment, culture, athletics, business. Um, so socially, this is great for students because there's lots of events, lots of programs and activities going on in the city. Um, Miami is a diverse city, like I mentioned earlier. Um, we call Miami the crossroads of the Americas. So you have people coming from all walks of life to the city of Miami. You find different neighborhoods like Little Haiti, Little Havana, where students get to learn about different cultures, try different cuisine. Um, but this also is helpful for students when it comes to finding um, internships and jobs. Because you have all of these organizations and companies and businesses in the city of Miami, and because UM is the premier university in South Florida, UM students are at a great advantage. If you're a Miami Hurricane, you definitely have an advantage when it comes to getting exposed to different opportunities as it relates to internships and, um, you know, future career uh, goals. We do have the Topple Career Center available for our students to help them prepare for the time when it comes to explore these opportunities. Um, so that's one of the great programs that we have available for our students. Now I'm gonna transition over to the admission process. We do have some new announcements for this year. This year we have gone test optional. So for students um, who, are, who, don't, or who are applying to the University of Miami, you're not required to submit test scores to be considered for admission or even for scholarships. We also have included a supplemental essay on our Common App. So in addition to the Common App essay, you'll find that there's a supplemental essay component that you'll need to um, fill out. We'll look, we require your official high school transcripts. We recalculate your GPA to an unweighted 4.0 scale and look at you in the context of your school. Um, your counselor will send us a school report giving us that background information. And then we require two letters of recommendation, preferably one from a teacher and preferably one from a counselor. Another announcement is that this year we have um, starting this year, we will be uh, committing to meeting 100% demonstrated financial need for all admitted students. So that means if you're applying for financial aid and there's a gap between the cost of attendance and what we offer is, um, and what your family can contribute, um, the university is committed to meeting that gap. So if you're interested in financial aid, definitely make sure you apply. And finally, we do offer merit scholarships. All students who apply to UM are automatically considered for merit scholarships. All you have to do is apply. There's no supplemental application or any additional documents needed. If you apply by our November 1st deadlines, which is either early decision one or early action, you'll also be eligible for premier-based scholarships. Those range from covering full cost of tuition to full cost of attendance. So I highly encourage if you're interested in the U, definitely try to apply early, whether that's ED1 or EA, so that you can be eligible for those premier scholarships. I know I went through that really quickly, but definitely make sure that you reach out to me if you have any questions or just want some more information about the university. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen here and pass it over to my colleague, Dana. Hello everyone. Um, my name is Dana Hassel and I am the regional representative for the University of Pittsburgh. Um, and I'm not on camera. Sorry about that. We'll start all over again. Um, Dana Hassel, I'm regional representative for the University of Pittsburgh. Uh, I too live here in New Jersey. I'm originally from Pittsburgh. I too am a two-time alum from the University of Pittsburgh, as is my husband, a two-time alum, and also my daughter is also a two-time alum. So uh, as you can see, we have a lot of blue and gold in our household, and I am looking forward to sharing some of the highlights of the university with you. Um, sharing my screen right here, hopefully, and um, I can get one of my colleagues to give me a thumbs up if my screen is showing properly. Thank you so much. Um, never can trust uh, the tech when you need it. But uh, what I want to dwell on today is the fact that we are um, here as unscripted. That means we're leaving your future up to you. We can match you wherever you want to go with all the resources that we have available. 
First thing I do want to talk to you about is the city of Pittsburgh. The city of Pittsburgh, I'm a little biased because I'm from there, but um, we have a lot to offer. The city of Pittsburgh is only uh, about half a million people at most. And so it, coming from New Jersey, uh, you're used to a high density population you can take advantage of all the amenities that the city has to offer. We have a lot of culture in the city. Uh, we have about 90 different strong generational neighborhoods that surround the campus. Downtown Pittsburgh is about three miles away from the campus. So uh, with your student ID, you can go all over what we call Allegheny County, which is where um, the campus is located, taking advantage of all that the city has to offer. We have a number of museums, uh, the Andy Warhol Museum's there. For those of you who may be familiar with uh, the Liberty Science Center, we have the Carnegie Science Center. And we are right next door to Carnegie Mellon University. And we are on what we call University Row. Uh, there's about nine different colleges and universities in that three mile stretch. Um, and so one of our uh, things that we do like to promote is cross registration. So if a particular university does have a class that you would be interested in taking that we don't have, uh, you can take it and you only, uh, you not only get the credits for those class, but you get the uh, grade uh, calculated into your GPA from the University of Pittsburgh. And the connections that we have, I'm sure some of you may use Heinz Ketchup. Heinz is uh, from Pittsburgh and those headquarters are there as well as American Eagle Outfitters. And also we have uh, a number of research and um, internship opportunities available to you as well. Now, 80% of your learning is done outside of the classroom. And most of that, you will find the opportunities right at your footsteps on the Pittsburgh campus. We have research opportunities because we are a top ranked internationally um, based research institution. And so uh, with that, you can continue any research that you may have started as an under, as, uh, in your high school uh, or start something completely new. And you can do this in the second term of your freshman year. We match you up with the type of research experience that you're looking to have. And with that faculty guidance, you can either work in a lab if that's what you're interested in or if you are interested in being a co-author. Um, it's up to you how far you would like to go with that. We also have guaranteed internships. Um, every student's guaranteed at least one internship before they graduate. And if you are interested in our College of Business Administration, you're probably going to get about three or four before you graduate. Um, but with that, we have an internship prep program. As with anything, if you're wearing the University of Pittsburgh label, we need to um, just provide you with the procedures and protocols of representing the university and so that you can have the most marvelous experience that we have to offer. One of the other things that we really uh, like to pride ourselves on is our Honors College. We take about 600 students a year into our Honors College and our Honors College is unique in that we are one of the few institutions non-Ivy League that is able to offer the prestigious Bachelor of Philosophy degree. And with that Honors College, uh, we kind of complement all of the other uh, professional schools and their honors programs. And it's a kind of fluid program in which you can participate as little or as much as your schedule or your desire. And when you can choose any major that you like and participate in the Honors College, you get a chance to participate in some of their exclusive programs. Um, if a student is not admitted into the Honors College initially as a freshman, you would simply um, engage in what we call demonstrated interest. I call it being an Honors Groupie. Um, attend the programs. There are courses that are available to non-Honors students so that you can participate. Um, and you would reapply after your freshman year. The Honors College also has its own dormitory facility, so students can engage with each other outside of the classroom for um, 
social events as well as academic events. And we have over 350 different sites in 75 different countries around the world available to you for our study abroad program. Uh, we strongly encourage students to take advantage of our study abroad, either for a short amount of time, maybe two weeks, uh, two months, uh, whatever uh, fits into your schedule or your particular needs. We also have guaranteed housing for three years on campus. Uh, we have singles, doubles, triples, quads, suites, and apartment style living. And so we can uh, match up with whatever type of limit living accommodations you would be interested in. If you wish to remain on campus after that third year, that's fine. You will participate in the lottery, but we also have an off-campus housing office that will facilitate you in finding um, housing accommodations in one of those uh, cultural neighborhoods around the area. We also, uh, are, again, part of the ACC, uh, but we have regular student athletes too. So we have competitive club sports as well as intramurals and students who just like to hang out on the cathedral lawn. We have Shinley Park, which is part of the Allegheny County Park System and you can, it's within a 10 minute walking distance. So it has lots of green space. Uh, we are an urban campus. Uh, we have roughly about 19,000 students at the Pittsburgh campus, but we also have three other regional campuses located in Bradford, Greensburg, and Johnstown. And if you are interested in um, the University of Pittsburgh, but maybe not an urban campus, they are suburban and also um, would like uh, settings that would meet your needs. Uh, they are smaller. The Johnstown campus is probably the closest to New Jersey, um, and it's between Harrisburg and Pittsburgh. Um, they have about 3,000 students at that campus. The Greensburg and the Bradford campus probably have about 1,200 students. Um, and each has its own unique personality, uh, but all of the academic programs uh, mirror each other so that there is no uh, difference in the educational integrity of the regional campuses uh, versus the Pittsburgh campus. We are one institution with four locations. We also have over 700 different clubs and organizations. So there's lots for you to do. And you can go on to our student affairs uh, website um, and look uh, up an organization or an interest that you may have by keyword and get the listing of all the different clubs or organizations that would be part of that particular area. And if you don't find what you're looking for, you get together with seven other people with like-minded interests and find a faculty sponsor and you can create your own club. And we can't forget the alumni network, not just me, um, uh, but uh, also uh, we're about 300,000 deep worldwide. So that H2P uh, means a lot to the Pitt family. Uh, you can be out anywhere and see someone uh, with a pit sticker or H2P and you know exactly where uh, they hail from. Now the Pittsburgh campus, uh, we're located again, about three miles from downtown Pittsburgh, but that gives us the opportunity to, uh, within Pittsburgh, we have six teaching hospitals within walking distance on campus. So that puts us in a very uh, convenient spot for those students who are interested in the health sciences. And we're one of the top 10 institutions to study um, health sciences in the country. We're also uh, the number one public university in the Northeast uh, as um, from the Wall Street Journal. And what that says is not only are our academics top notch, uh, research, internship opportunities, but our student life uh, is also top ranked and students uh, have uh, followed through and complimented us on that as well. These are some of our popular majors that we have at the university, but um, one of the things that we really like to point out is even though we are a large institution, um, we have a 14 to 1 student to faculty ratio, which means you can still um, reach out and get that personalized touch 
from a large university like us um, and still feel at home and not lost uh, in like you're a, a number. Um, we have um, 20 graduate school guarantees and we uh, have that, um, I can here. Uh, what this is, is our opportunity to reward you, not only for all of the hard work that you've done in high school, but for your um, hard work that you've probably been doing since first grade. These are guaranteed admission programs that you would check off if you know uh, or you have some interest in pursuing additional education after uh, your undergraduate career. Um, you would be admitted or we would hold a space for you in these programs that would allow you to uh, just transition uh, following your undergraduate completion of your undergraduate studies. Uh, the only program uh, listed here that is not test optional would be the School of Nursing. Our School of Nursing, both undergraduate and graduate, uh, do uh, require testing. And so uh, when I go through the schools, I'll tell you a little bit more about that. But these guaranteed admissions programs, we are very proud of these in that it gives you the opportunity to um, secure uh, uh, your future in education. And what we like for you to do is choose one of the five entry schools, uh, Dietrich School of Arts and Sciences, Business College of Business Administration, uh, Swanson School of Engineering, and the School of Computing and Information are all test optional. The School of Nursing is not, but we will be reviewing students on, a, on an individual basis. And with our uh, application process, after you've chosen the school that you are interested in, we ask you to rank your campuses, um, one through four. Um, and also, we have three different ways for you to apply, the Common App, the Coalition App, or you can apply directly from our website. But it is important to us that you do complete our self-reported academic record. This is pre-calibrated for us so that we don't have to um, do that on your transcript and we can give you proper weight for your um, AP and honors courses. We also ask that students um, complete at least one um, uh, essay question. We want to know as much about you as we possibly can, particularly if you do decide to go test optional. Again, the School of Nursing is not available for that test optional. Um, category, uh, but uh, students who have their applications on file by December 15th are automatically reviewed for scholarships, again, having uh, at least one um, essay done. And the honors program, if you are applying to the honors college, you would need to do so by December 1st and have uh, that one mandatory essay uh, completed, which we will prompt you with. Um, my information is here. We do ask that you uh, take advantage of our virtual opportunities and make those connections. We update our campus uh, information on a routine basis so that you get the most accurate information and also about the uh, pandemic, but as also uh, to get uh, the current information about tours and uh, tutorials about how to complete the application. But please feel free to connect with me directly as your regional representative. I am here to help and hail to Pitt. Okay, I have popped back onto the screen. Um, we are at a very, 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 very tight timeline. So I am going to thank all of you for coming today. That is both panelists and participants. Participants, you will get a brief survey once I close down the room. Please take your time to do that. Please be reminded that this session is recorded, so you absolutely can come back to it. There are more sessions that you can register for, and if you miss something that is also recorded. I never introduced myself. I'm Dana Lambert. I'm from NJACAC, and I'm a counselor at West Milford High School. I am so glad you were all here. I want to thank our presenters. You did a great job. I learned a lot. Um, we are going to disappear into cyberspace in like two minutes. So everybody have a great evening, and thank you all for coming, and thank you presenters. Appreciated it. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.